Hey everyone, welcome to another episode. Today, we're gonna go over a how-to. Now that Void Bite's out of here, it's time to get to the real business. My name is Overbite, and today we're going over JSON Web Token Exploitation. Particularly, we're going to do Unsigned JWT in the OWASP Juice Shop Vulnerable Web App. And what it's asking us is to forge an essentially unsigned JWT token that impersonates the non-existing user JWNT3D at juiceshop.sh.op. So, on a more serious note, I want to thank Voidbyte for letting me make a video on his channel today. And if all goes well, maybe you'll be invited back. So the first thing we want to do starting this vulnerability is make sure we copy down the username that they want us to use when we do this exploit. We'll open up Venno, and we'll make a little notepad of all the notes that we need to have during this exploit. You want to make sure you always keep notes when you're doing something like this, just to keep track. So let's go CD into documents. And let's go ahead and make a new directory called Juice Shop. And let's go ahead and make that file called jwt.txt. Paste that username in, and there we go. So to perform this vulnerability, we're going to have to log in as a pre-existing user, and we're going to have to steal their token, or use our own token, our own login, and manipulate that in a way that's going to allow us to log into this user. Don't worry if it sounds complicated and hard right now, I'm going to break it down for us. So let's get to the main page of this app. Let's change this URI to the home page. Go ahead and log on in. So I already know this web application is vulnerable to SQLI. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in as the admin. So the reason why I know it's going to log in the admin is because this web application doesn't have that big of a user base since it's a vulnerable practice one. And what one equals one tac tac means in SQL is true. So one equals one is going to always equal true. And then the comments is going to come out the password field when we enter. But before we do that, we have to make sure we use or. So it's going to go A, tac to initialize the starting of the SQL, or one equals one, which is true. So it's either going to be user A or true, which is always going to return the value true in the SQL query. And this is just going to common out the password field. And we'll see it when we get burp up and running. So let's go ahead and turn on our intercept and click log in. Go ahead and move this over to this side of the screen. And grab one to burp. So let's forward. And you'll see the JWT token because it's base 64, and you cannot mistake that. So it starts with the uh, EY. Oh, looks like we got the login as admin challenge out of the way. All right, here's our base 64. You can notice it because it starts with EY. Most of the time, that's what base 64 is going to start with. In special circumstances, it doesn't, but a lot of the time it does. So let's go ahead and copy that and let's, you know, make a note of it. Now that we have that in our notes, we should release some room for more notes later on. Save it. So to decode this JWT token, we want to go to JWT.io.
and we'll go ahead and paste it into the encode field. So before we get into the exploit, I'm going to go over the fields of a JWT token. So JWT stands for JSON Web Token, and a JSON Web Token is made out of the three fields, the header, the payload, and the signature. The header field identifies the token to the web server, so the web server knows what kind of token to expect and what kind of algorithm it needs to verify the token. Next, we have the payload field, which carries the values of the user and transfers those values to the server so the server knows what user is requesting what service. And the reason why the web server has to use the token to do this is because HTTP is a stateless protocol, meaning web developers cannot depend on HTTP to use to track users and to identify users on their web servers. The next field we have is the signature field. And what the signature field does is it verifies the integrity of the token during transport. So basically, you send this token to the web server and if someone does a man-in-the-middle attack on you and takes your token and manipulates it and when it gets to the web server, the web server will reject that request since the encryption keys not match up with each other. So let's go back in and see what the web server is asking us to do for the six point. See here, go over it again. We're doing an unsigned JWT attack, and it wants us to forge a non-existing user named JWTN3D at juicetechsh.op. To do this, we need to do two things. We need to change the email field on the JWT payload, and then in the header field, since it wants us to do an unsigned exploit, we need to change the algorithm type to not, since the server's not going to be using the signature field to verify the integrity of this web token. So let's go back over here and change the email field from admin to our not existing user. Let's go up here to the algorithm and type on non. Got to take a drink from my sweet purple cup. I know, it's real manly. I think it's cute. All right. So after this, we need to go and encode it back into the base64 URL where it came from. And what base64 URL is, it's a base64, but it is used for HTTP traffic to ensure the base64 will transport properly inside the HTTP header. So we'll just go ahead and type in base64 URL encoder. And hopefully we can find a decent one here. Oh, put base65, that's not gonna help me. Oh, ha. Huh. So, we already grabbed our, make sure we grabbed it. Our header, encode it. Grab our encoded base64 URL string and we're gonna put it in our vent notes. Now with base64, if we go over here, And actually, let me grab this again so I can show you how the syntax of a JSON web token should be. So you see here, each field needs to be appended to another field using a period. That's just how the syntax is set up. It's telling the server, hey, this is the end of the header field. Now we're starting the payload field. And then, hey, this is the end of the payload field. Now we're starting the signature field. And that's very important to keep in mind. 
So we'll go ahead and copy our new payload, our first part of our payload, our header. And we already have it in there, perfect. And let's go ahead and put that period right there. Go ahead and save that. Come back over here to the payload. So take this payload. Make sure it has the right email on it. Just go ahead and grab it from them. And paste it in here. Now we go ahead and grab it. Paste it in here and just grab it again. I like the word grab today, apparently. We're just grabbing everything. Let's go ahead and append it to the end of our string here. So now our payload is complete. So what we want to do with this, let's put it back into our HTTP. So what we want to do now is replace our, our payload with the original token that we stole using the HTTP interceptor burp suite. So we can go ahead and paste it underneath the authorization field. We can also paste it, it won't hurt, paste it at the end of the token field either. So we'll go, press forward. We'll do the same thing here. Make sure we paste it underneath the token field right after it. Just replace it and then replace it again underneath the authorization field. And now, if we've done everything correctly, we'll keep on pressing forward. Our token will matriculate in the web browser, in the web server and we will be the unsigned user. So it could take a while to press click. See, it's still, we're not matriculated yet. Still not, still not. Keep on clicking next. We'll matriculate eventually. Let me go over here. I might just cut this part until we get it. <laughs> A lot of clicks involved. And voila, we have it and we're successfully solved the challenge. Man, that was a lot of clicks. <laughs> Gotta work out for my index finger. Let's go ahead and finish that out. I think there's only a few more reps. And that's a, what we call a nerd's workout. <laughs> so let's go ahead and turn the intercept off. And there's the exploit right there. So let's review how to do an unsigned JWT exploit. The first thing that we want to do is make sure we have our HTTP interceptor up, like Brook Suite. Then we log into our user account and we click through the fields and forward the HTTP headers until we come to our base64 URL encoded JWT token. We take that, we go to JWT.io, we decode it, we change the fields in the payload and the header, we change the header algorithm to none, and then we change the payload field for the username 
or whatever film that the website is using and we change it to the user that we want to be. After that, we gotta re-encode our token into base64 URL. We first do the header, making sure that we put a period at the end, and then we do the payload. We put the payload right after the period of the header, and then we put another period at the end of the payload, because that's what the syntax ex expects from the server. Since this is unsigned, like I said before, we don't have to worry about the signature field. Now, we take that new string and we put it back in our HTTP interceptor, burp suite. And then we just forward the headers back to the web server and tell our non-existing user or whatever user that we want to be activates. And then that's it. I want to thank you for watching this video today and sticking with me. This is the first video I ever made. And I just want to say a shout out to Voidbyte again for letting me to come on the channel and make another video for, for you guys. So if you like it, let me know down in the comment section and let me know what I can do better. And I hope to be back on here. Um, and by the way, if you guys want to see any kind of other exploits too on web applications, let me know. Also, if you want to see stuff outside of web applications like Buffer Overflows, also let me know again in the comment section. And I'll, I'll make those uh, videos for sure. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.